Okay, so let's um, let's go over this. Hey, hey, good evening, everybody. We're going to have a uh, four-part series. Obviously, I can't go over all these strategies and over everything, the indicator and the strategy in one um, call. So we're going to break it up into four calls. So I'll check on Gerald's schedule, but what I like to do is every week, and we can even move next week back to 5 if it fits Gerald's schedule. But every week between 4.30 or 5, every Wednesday, I'd like to go over a four-part series on how to use this system. Um, so we're going to go over the indicator and the strategy tonight. Uh, this will be – I want to go over the basics first tonight just to make sure you understand what I'm looking for, how to, how to, how to use it. Um, at the end of the fourth session, we'll be going over advanced strategies. Um, I like to use longer time frames on uh, different markets, and I'm going to show you how to use that. Um, if you're a swing trader, if you're a day trader, I'll show you time frames specifically for day trading, and then we will go over that in probably the third or fourth um, call. So uh, today, let's let's break it down and just go over the basics. If you uh, when when you have it in your hands how to utilize it, uh, the, how to utilize the indicator and the strategy, okay? So, like I said, next uh, two, uh, Wednesday, we'll have another call. We'll get a little bit more in-depth, and then the following Wednesday, we'll have another call, and then we'll get really in-depth on uh, certain setups I really love to uh, implement with the system, okay? So, that being said, let's go over this. So, here's crude oil. I just thought it'd be best to show you... Uh, today's data. This is the afternoon session on crude. And let's first of all, let's break the indicator down first and I'll get this momentum chart off. Let's break the indicator down first so make sure we understand what's going on. So, okay, we have an indicator and we have a strategy. The strategy is automated. It will pick up everything that the indicator picks up and it will uh, fill your uh, fills for traders that want to do auto trading. It has four targets, or you can have two targets, you can have three targets, you can have one target, you know, four targets, five targets, six targets, etc. So I'll show you how to do that here in a minute also. But uh, you can use the indicator or the strategy. So I'm going to take the strategy off first. So let me just disable the strategy. Let's go over the indicator. Some traders don't want to use a strategy-based system. So just go over the indicator, and let's just try to break down what this indicator can do. Okay, the whole idea behind this system was to catch retracements with overall trend direction uh, by catching the sweet spot in the market on that retracement, meaning we don't want to catch, uh, you know, retracements that are way too deep or way too shallow. So what we try to do is we try to find zones in the market that can uh, create uh, reversals or, or ultimate uh, tops and bottoms with trend. So how, how can we do that, and how can we, we utilize the indicator and the strategy to find trades way before they come up? First of all, this is a very leading indicator. I have my own spin on the ATR. I have my own spin on volume, and I have my own spin on speed. So if you are a day trader, you need speed in the market, period. If you do not have speed, retracements do not work. If you're in a chop or flat market, retracements tend not to work, but they work excellent with trend. So what I've done is I put trend filters in to show where possible chop is and then where possible trend is. So if we look at the indicator by itself, this is strictly the indicator. We have this zone, this green zone. And very specifically, this green zone tells us that we are in an uptrend. So we are looking to buy retracements. If you have a red zone, let me get an arrow here for you guys. If we have a red zone, then we are specifically looking for sell retracements and trying to short the market. So if you notice at the close on crude, every cents right here at 304, it was a buy retracement market all the way into the close. And before that, it was this morning on crude, it was nothing but sell retracements. We had, I think, five back-to-back -back trades on crude this morning that, that caught the zone trades. So that being said, if we know the, uh, the ATR turns green, 
how can we time these trades? How can we get in these retracements with low risk and high probability runners? The best thing to do is to try to get into a retracement with overall speed. What does that mean? Is it we want markets that are going to go vertical, like this vertical. We don't want markets that go sideways. If we go sideways, retracements really don't work very well. So what we need to do is we need to find markets that actually go vertical, either vertical up, up, or vertical down. All right. So for us to do that, we want to uh, watch our ATR if it flips to the green side. But then we want to watch these what's called speed bars. This is a really key component of the system that really stands out uh, among other indicators and other uh, strategies out there because it times your trade for you. Not only do we know the specific zone we should be buying for a high probability trade, but we also know that where the speed and the retracement levels are coming in at to give us a big heads up. So just to show you a, a typical setup that we would do is that this is a zone trade. If we were green ATR, meaning we're looking for buy retracements, we would wait until these red boxes start printing. These red boxes, when they print, that tells us that we got counter trend traders coming in the market against overall trend and that we got a possible reversal coming up on our hands. So this, these two boxes told you get ready for a trend continuation. These two red boxes told you look for a trend continuation. This one red box into the close around, uh, not the close, but 1435 to so 235 had a huge run from 94.80 uh, all the way up to what, 94.30 is a 50 tick move on the uh, on crude, but that told you. So these are very important to your trading plan right here according to the algorithm right here. Those red boxes tell you of a possible trend reversal or, or, or trend continuation, sorry, with trend. So what you want to do then is we want to look for if our ATR is green, so if our ATR one, ATR trend is green, we want to look for red speed boxes. If you can just do this, you're almost there already on catching a good retracement. Because what you're doing is you've got overall trend, I got a specific trend filter for this ATR, I got a specific zones I look for, I know the specific zones that I look for or in high probability reversals and they're very very accurate in these zones that come with the software and then also the speed boxes tell us when the retracement comes in because we want to catch the wrongly positioned traders the WPTs I call it WPT trade which is wrongly positioned traders or counter trend traders All right, so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to go against the overall, uh, the, well, what the public likes to do. A lot of the public likes to do what? They like to fade the, fade the move or counter the move, and they're trying to catch this retracement. The whole idea is that a lot of traders think that, well, it moves so high it can't go any higher. So they try to short these highs with divergence or the MAC crossing over or an RSI divergence or what have you. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to catch this pullback. And what happens is it grinds higher, stops them out. Then they try to catch this pullback. What happens? It grinds higher, stops them out. They try to catch this small pullback, grinds higher, stops them out. Or this small pullback, excuse me, grinds higher, stops them, stops them out. So we don't like to uh, buy high, sell low. So the average trader, what they like to do, they like to buy low, sell high. Now. We have a little running joke among some of us friends that have been trading this for a long time. Anybody that says they like to buy low or sell high, they're probably not doing very well in the market because, you know, you just, you can't, it's pretty impossible to catch the lows and highs in the market. It's very, very impossible because you're just lucking out if you're trying to catch this swing low, that swing high, that swing low. Very, very difficult. So what we like to do is we like to, with this algorithm, we like to buy high and sell higher and short low and buy lower 
Now you're probably thinking, well, what the heck? You know, why would you want to do that? Well, because if you bought here, you're actually selling higher. If you bought this, you're actually selling higher. You bought high here, you're selling higher. So from these lows, you're actually buying high. You're buying high here and you're selling higher. You're buying high from this point, selling higher, buying high, selling higher. And then shorting low to be the same way. In other words, you're buying higher lows. Buying higher lows, buying higher lows, buying higher lows. So that's why this algo works so well is because it's totally opposite of what the public likes to do. The public likes to try to counter trend trade or fade the move. And it's not just the public, it's all the indicators that are out there. There's thousands and thousands of indicators out there. The majority of indicators that I've found is that they fade the market, they fade the move. And if you find indicators that are with trend, you know, where do you, where do you buy on the pullback? And that's where these zones come in. So let's go back to it. So this ATR trend is green then, we want to look for pullbacks and we're looking for red speed boxes. That, that alone will alert us on a trade. Just those two combinations right there. And I call these WPT trades, catching the rolling position traders or counter trend traders. So just by that knowledge right there alone, you're probably way ahead of the game as, as far as that goes. And so that's the two characteristics that you really want to pay attention to if you're trading this indicator. And it doesn't matter what time frame you use. I'll show you ultimate long time frames for position traders where you'll only see two or three trades a day and you're looking for these big V bottoms and our V tops in the market. We'll go over that probably in the third or fourth conference call when we go into more time frame things. But I want to give you the basics of it now so you understand why this thing works so well. So we're trying to catch the rolling position traders or the counter trend traders on, on pullbacks for continuations. And this is when typically a lot of traders just seem to not understand or get it. Is it when they say buy high, sell higher, uh, they're, they're afraid the market's moved too far. The market can go, can, can go set new, higher lows all day long or set lower lows and lower highs all day long, okay? So we have something that we've always said as traders and everybody says it, you know, don't catch a falling knife. You know, don't try to counter trend trade a market going down on the way up and don't jump in front of a runaway train if, if their train's moving up. Don't try to fade these. That's for uh, novice amateur investors or amateur traders that read these books and say, hey, it's diverging right here, triple divergence or divergence. I love divergence. I always have with trend, but I can't stand it against trend. It's very difficult to, to do that. So, you know, that's the game plan right here. In a nutshell, that's what the algo is trying to do. Don't make it more difficult than that. We're trying to buy retracements with overall ATR trend, but what we're doing is we're, we're letting our indicators our speed boxes tell us when a possible reversal is going to happen, right? That being said, let's move on to the next um, of what we want to do now. Now, there's what's called a shallow retracement. We have three types of retracements, okay, in the market. And this happens daily. You have a shallow retracement. We have a shallow retracement. We have a intermediate retracement. And then we have a deep retracement for V bottoms, V tops. All right, these are the three retracements you're going to have to understand. Now the algo will do the work for you, but if you can understand which ones are deep and shallow. So there's a shallow, deep, or intermediate, and deep. If you want to catch trend moves and you want higher lows and lower highs, you want to just stick with these. The majority of all the trades that have continuation trades that are blow-off rallies or blow-off sell-offs never break the intermediate retracement. And I have that number for you. All right, it's already built into the program. I know the number pretty much, give or one, one plus one or plus two or minus one minus two, where these markets should reverse for continuations. Once it gets outside that intermediate retracement, which I'll show you on these charts, you come into deep retracements, your probability of success goes way down. So what we want to try to do then is we want to try to look for trades in the shallow retracement and the intermediate retracement, which I'll show you in a second. All right. So that's, that's the basic guts of it. We're trying to find ATR trend, which is green. We're trying to find opposite color speed boxes of the ATR trend. 
which would be red in this case since we're uptrending here in crude all afternoon. And you know, this is a 118.18 Uni Renko bar. I know some of you use a 113.13, that's fine. And some of you use a 5 sim Renko, that's fine. Um, but then we look for red speed boxes to find the area where this thing should reverse, right? And then we have the zone where it should bounce out of. Now, from these zones then, we can have a shallow zone, shallow retracement zone, an intermediate retracement zone, and a deep retracement zone, which I provide for you. If you're looking, if, if, if I'm new to this system, I would not take any deep retracements because you're not catching hard trend. You're kept trying to catch V bottoms, V tops. Anytime I close two closes below a deep retracement, I'm looking for a trend change, period. I'm not looking for a continuation, all right? The only time you get a deep retracement continuation is the market's hard, up hard all day, and it comes down and gets that deep retracement, hits it right on, in that zone and takes off. You know, you'll see a lot of V tops and V bottoms with the deep retracement, but these continuation trades are almost all right here, the shallow and intermediate zone, all right? So what I have for the indicator is this. Let's get into the indicator then, all right? Let's move forward. These arrows will automatically fire when you tell them to fire when these optic color speed bars come in against ATR trend, trying to get continuation trades. If you want to only buy inside of this zone, you can do that from the zone that you select. Okay, you can do that by selecting this in the indicator. Let's get into the indicator now. Let's break this down a little bit. All right, so I have a trend filter built in already. Now, the trend filter I use, I like the Uni Rinko that Ninja provide, uh, provides, the Uni Rinko bar. I like putting that in, and I like to use that. So uh, we already uh, told you guys what to do that and how to use that. Um, here's my speed period. These are the can, uh, the, this tells you where the speed box is going to come up. This is the number of candles that I'll print. Now, this is the ATR length right here. So I got a 62.54 on crude, all right? It gives me a zone. And if you just want to buy a 64 on an uptrend in a 54 zone, right, it's pretty much ideally like a 62 to 54% retracement. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to, this will create a zone. So the 62 will be the higher number, lower will be 54. If you only want to get buys inside of the zone that you like, then just click zone. It will only take WPT trades or the what I call optic color speed bars against ATR trend, catching the wrongly position traders, if zone is checked. So if zone is checked, it's only going to fire an arrow inside that zone if it closes at least inside of that zone. Okay, now I got a way to show you, which I'll show you here in a second on zone ticks. You can put negative numbers in there and positive numbers inside the zone and away from the zone. I'll go over that in a second. I just don't want to confuse you. But let's say I uncheck zone and I hit apply. Now what it's telling you is that it will take all arrows when you get a qualified reversal bar, qualified reversal bar with speed retracements. Speed retracement, qualified, qualified. Okay? So you're getting the qualified reversal bars with the speed bars because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I just have to be above the zone. As long as I'm above the green zone and I'm not closing two candles below, if I close two candles below this ATR, your outer ATR, which is 62, if it closes below 62, then you're not going to fire any trades, any more trades. It's going to wait for another ATR to start printing. All right? So that's totally up to you how you want to do it. When I get speed in the market, when I get momentum in the market, which I'll show you how you can use a momentum chart, our momentum chart tells us when the market's possibly going majorly vertical to the upside or downside. I like to use these unchecked. I like this unchecked. I like getting all these waves. I like the first and second wave, whether it be shallow or intermediate. Okay, and I'll turn the, uh, I can turn the algo on or you can turn the algo on at that time. All right, with the strategy when there's speed coming in, which I'll show you how to do. And we'll go over that coming up in the next conference calls on strategies, how to use, uh, to use this. But you can take the, you can, the arrows will automatically fire after the speed bars come in and you get a, a qualified reversal. Okay? 
If you want only inside the zone, let's go back over that, go back into indicator. Let's say you just want to inside the zone, click zone, click apply. Now it is only going to see it does not show it's outside the zone. See it's outside the zone, outside the zone. Well, this didn't have a speed bar anyway, but outside the zone, only this one will show up right here. Oops. Only this guy. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, only hit, only he will show up right there because you have green speed, optic color speed bar, but you're too far away from the zone. What you can do is this. Let's say that you don't want to have you don't want the price to have to close inside of your lowest zone. Because what it's going to do is going to look at this. It's going to look at the number of ticks. If it says if zone ticks is set to zero, that means your 54, which is your lower number, which is here near it's the one on the inside, is green ATR. It means zero. If it closes on that line or one tick below it, that is considered a close inside the zone. If you go positive ticks, let's say plus, plus two ticks, that means I can get a reversal bar and it doesn't have to hit my zone. It can come within two ticks of the zone and close and then still get a green arrow. Okay. If I go four ticks, that means it come, come down within four ticks of the zone get a reversal and an arrow will fire. If you want it to go inside of the zone and you're trying to get to this outer edge, let's say, like to me, I love 54. I keep pre preaching about 54. A lot of you guys inside and outside the room have been showing me your results. It's been fantastic. Congratulations. 54 is a great number with this algo. You know, it's just a wonderful number for reversals. I love it on the NASDAQ futures on a longer time frame. I had a lot of trades on that today again with the NASDAQ futures. So um, the 54 is a really good number. So Let's say you want to get near or at that 54, or I mean 62 out here. You can go negative. So let's say I go negative 8 or negative 7, and I hit apply. What that tells me in that tells me is that now it's too far. It's outside my zone now because it starts at where the lower zone is. 54 minus 7 ticks. 54 7. So you're outside of it, right? You're outside of that zone by two, two closes. I'll probably only close one close. So you, you can do a negative number and go, well, I want to go three ticks. I want to go three ticks inside the zone or, or two ticks. And what it's telling you is now it appears. It's telling you I got to at least get inside that zone that, that I selected. So you can do negative or positive ticks where that arrow is going to fire. And what you're going to find, once you find a zone that you really like, I give the ones I prefer to you, some of you trade a lot of different markets, Bitcoin futures, you know, all the way to whatever. You know, you're going to, you, you know, a lot of traders can do their own thing and find zones that just work really, really well with this. So that's what zone ticks me. You do negative or positive. What I like to do is just, I leave it at zero as a default for you guys because you really just need to be, um, you really just need to be at or near that zone, right, right at it, you know. And to me, if you get momentum, I just leave zone unchecked anyway because I want to catch that shallow and that intermediate retracement. All right? So that being said, if you want to get more speed bars, you want to increase your speed candles. You want to get less speed bars and less trades, you want to decrease your speed candles because that's what's telling the market if the market's got speed on the retracement. I prefer four to six, four to six speed because that tells you you're getting a nice, Nice retracement with decent speed. You bring it down to one, two, you're not getting any speed really on a retracement. It's very hard to find trades. If you want a lot of trades, bump it up to 12 and you'll get trades all day long. You know, so depending if you're a scalper or if you're a position trader, if you want more accuracy on a system like this, I would stick from I'd stick to around four to six on your speed candles. I leave it the default or just leave the default where I put it there for you. Okay. So that is that. So long alert. This will fire an alert. Uh, it has a wave in it. I would change this obnoxious sound it makes to a beeping sound. You will go to alert over here. Just change that one to a two or a three or a four or a five, and you'll get like a beeping sound. Some of you have your own wave files. You know that you can put in like bullseyes if it's a buy signal. 
submarine tanking if it's a short signal you can put your own wave files in there if you want to okay so but that will stop on alert that alert will fire when the arrow fires so when this arrow fires it's going to fire an alert if your speakers are on so you will have an alert when that fires on okay so let's go back and let me turn this back off to I'll take in all trades and take that off and hit apply So now it's going to take all retracement trades WPTs. Now, like I said, I'm really starting to like longer time frames because especially on the NASDAQ futures, it moves so fast and you get so many subs from the day and you get, you get a, a smaller risk because you're catching it right near the bottom end of the zone. So we're going to go over strategies like that, like I said, in the third or fourth call. But let me go over the basics, like you know, I'm going over the indicator now and let me go over now the strategy, okay? Well, let me get you ready for the strategy. So, Wherever the indicator is going to fire an arrow, it will fire the strategy. I had it mirror the indicator. So what does that mean? If I go into strategy and I put the exact same levels in on the strategy, same thing. Look, it looks just like the indicator, doesn't it? It has got the same trend in there. It's got the same speed period, candles, ATR link 62, 162, second ATR 54, 154. It's got a DS in there. That's a standard DS. Um, it does have a start time and end time. If you don't want this thing to run, okay, you should be watching the strategy anyway. That's why you sign a big risk disclaimer. Obviously, you know, auto trading is really, really risky because your computer can go down. You don't know if your orders are outstanding out there or not. There's not going to close your positions. If your strategy goes down, just a lot of things can happen. So if you're doing automated trading, make sure that I always tell traders, that's why we have you sign the risk disclaimer because you can trade live monies with this is that you be aware if your computer goes down, have your broker's numbers handy and your account number and flatten your position, you know, would probably be the best thing to do. And then um, if not, you know, just watch your position as it trades. Now, there's a certain time there that you can turn the strategy on and certain times you should not run it and, and run it. In chop markets, I would not run the strategy. In trend, trend is a good time to turn it on. I will show you in a second how to do that on how to look for momentum in the market using our momentum indicator and using the strategy to do that or using our momentum indicator and using our indicator to fire manual trades on retracements with the arrows. So that's something you can do. Um, it does have target one, two, three, and four built into it. Here's your stop. I got 20, 40, 60, 100, uh, uh, 20 ticks here. Now this works great on the micros also guys. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna use the system and you're gonna start trading live with some of this stuff, you should try the micros. If you can't make money with the micros, you can't make money with the big contracts. Just be aware of that. So uh, I do have this in here: daily stop, stop goal, stop law, a, a goal, a daily goal, a daily stop. Listen, that just tells you it's gonna shut the strategy down and it's not gonna trade anymore. But I, you know, we put that in for some traders. But if you're watching it anyway, that's a really irrelevant because you're going to shut your own strategy off and, and, and trail your positions and so on. But if you want to change, if you don't want to trade uh, four contracts, let's say, you can go down and you can trade, you can do entries per direction. So if you change that to one, then it's only give one contract entry, automated entry. If you change it to two, it'll be two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, et cetera. Just change that number and the strategy will do that accordingly. So when I turn this on, thing on, it's going to be four contracts. Let's take a look at it. So this is, uh, if you had a strategy and you ran crude oil, you did well into the close. Had some great trades into the close. All right, so if we look at this, what's going to happen is this. You don't have to have break even plus one if you don't want to, but you can if you want to also. Um, I got break even plus one in the strategy. You can do negative ticks if you want. In other words, you don't have to have to hit break even plus one after the first uh, contracts have hit. But you can see I have break even in here. Where's that? Break even plus ticks one. If you want negative, you can put a negative number there and have it breathe a little bit and negative seven. That way you get more runners if you want. I leave it at one, but some traders like it to breathe and get those big runners. So. You're able to do that if you would like. Um, so when we turn this on, let me get through it real quick. So it's going to start with four contracts if you leave it at four contracts. Like I said, if you want to come down, 
and you want to change it from four and you want to go down to two come here change entry per direction to two now we're doing two contracts and then we enable it and now we're doing two contracts one two one two one two one two all right let me put it back to four show you why I got a combination of four I like but you can do whatever you guys want to do based upon your risk tolerance all right so let's go back to four four contracts so here's how the algo works it's it's going to what wherever your arrows come up on the indicator it's going to come up on the strategy it's going to emulate the same exact setup so if you're doing well and you're trading well and you're doing well in the indicator setup the strategy will emulate what you're doing as an individual trader It'll automatically get in for you automatically put your stop in automatically put your profit targets in I don't care if the market is super fast you guys have pricing already this thing will run through fast markets I got this coded so good that it, what it'll do it won't shut down on us it does not shut down or run through real fast markets so we're good the reason I did that I like this strategy when there's momentum and I'll show you in a second so the markets are naturally going to be fast so we're looking when we turn the strategy on for entries right away it's not like we're waiting a half hour or 45 minutes you know with the momentum in the market I'll show you how we look for that then we want this thing to start looking for setups so the first one had a buy four profit target and then it got breaking plus one on all four so it's out here's the second one though so profit profit target one hit 20 ticks hit 40 ticks hit 60 ticks right and then hit its 100 ticks up here well what happens is let's say that that um, that it doesn't hit all its targets like it did today once you hit target so first of all once you hit target one your break even plus one so you're right there there's your break even plus one once it hits this target once target two hits this automatically moves up to target one so no matter what the reason it kept in the runner it did not get out because it ratchets the, the ratchet up it'll ratchet up so now target one is a new stop loss once so that's once target two hits once target three hits now target two it cannot get us out of the trade on to get us out on the target two but guess what it never got us out here it went to the full target of 100 ticks so that's how the strategy works so if you hit first target it's break even plus one hits a second target then it goes target one is all the contracts it will take it out hits a third target it'll take it all out at target three or target two and then it'll try to go for the ultimate four target okay so that's how the strategy is going to work now that being said if it takes one out let's say if it takes one out and we get another retracement let's see here it is right here so we we got four long we got one out two out three out so we are we are long three contracts right it will never it will never expose you more and we're out of three contracts I'm sorry it will never expose you more than the contracts that you have put in whether you trade micros or the big contract it will add back in the number of contracts on a retracement until you shut the strategy down in other words if I took three out here and I got one contract still running on the next qualified retracement it will put three back on if I took one out here and it came back down on a retracement it would put one back on it's never going to expose you more than your number right here okay I did that so you guys wouldn't be overexposed in the market so we'll never get more than your four contracts or these number of contracts right here that you put in okay so that's very important to know all right so let's go let's take a look at a strategy then saying okay I like this I like how I like how this moved up how can I look how can I possibly get in a vertical market then how can I get in when this is possibly going vertical and not sideways right because we want a big vertical market we want it to these big vertical moves like this right so the best way to do it is we can use our momentum chart that we have in the in the room now the momentum chart is this I'm put it beside it so let's take a look at this let me skinny this down so the momentum chart says this it has my shallow zone my intermediate zone and my deep zone all put on one chart 
Now I do have an update for you uh, members, and it's actually going to show a wave count, and it's actually going to show a bar like this when it turns six red or six green. So let's take a look at this real quick. Let's take a look at why this market caught momentum. All right. So we had first buy momentum that came in the market where we turned six, uh, six all, all three zones turned six green dots because each zone is comprised of two dots. So here's my shallow. Let me blow this up real quick. So here would be my shallow zone, just so I can understand this. This is a shallow zone. This is for blow-off rallies. You want the market to turn here on a retracement. You want to get pulled in there. When the indicator turns an arrow at the shallow zone, you better be smiling ear to ear because it's typically a blow-off rally. Here's my intermediate zone, and here's my outer zone. All hard trend markets should never break these four dots right here. It should just ride them all morning if you're getting speed. Where you see these outer edges get hit is V bottoms, V tops, and it calls it all the time. But if you are using confluence like market profile or you're using some other indicator that uh, yesterday's high or low or some other indicator, if it overlaps this outer zone, you probably got a V top, V bottom. They're pretty big trades when they happen. They just, you're not, you have no momentum though. Momentum has dissipated. Just remember that. It's a deep, deep retracement. I prefer seeing trades like this happen in shallow. You see what happened here? All six turned, right here, all six turned green at the same time. Dots. All right? So you're looking for the first red WPT. Right there it is. That's at 1434. Did your strategy catch it? Let's take a look at it. Your strategy was turned on. Okay, 14.34. 34 is right here. There's where you would turn your strategy on, the retracement. And it got the low at 14.46 minutes later, and it exploded. We had a 94.85 fill, and it was still running into the close at 95.40. And so you had a 40, 50, 55 tick run using the momentum indicator momentum by turning on the strategy and getting this leg up. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's just blow this up so you can see it first. So let's take a look at this one. Here is 1313. This is when momentum came into the market. There's my shallow zone turned two green dots. My intermediate zone turned 10 green dots. And my outer zone turned uh, excuse me, two green dots. That told us we had momentum. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the WPTs, the wrongly positioned counter trend traders coming in the market. There they are. Okay, you want the algo to turn it on, you can turn it on, or you can use the indicator by itself. It printed the arrow here right below, um, or you can turn the algo to get that. Here again, you turn all six green. Let me move this over. All six green, there's my shallow, turn two green dots. Intermediate was already green, and obviously our long term is still green. So that's why I put the vertical line, and then it came down, and it caught this low here at 1347. I'll show you in a second, and then we're off to the races again. Then over here, I just showed you this one right there. So let's go back to these two, and let me show you how the algo can be turned on. So let's start it out at 1313, and 1313 is right there, right, sorry, right, right here. So here's 1313. This is when you got speed. See, speed came in the market right here, right? Speed, speed came in the market right here. Speed. That's when all these green dots start printing. Look, watch. That's when all these dots start printing. Speed start coming in. 1304, right there. Oops. Right there. Speed coming into the market. So the one thing that I have to see. Just because you have speed coming in the market, you have to make sure this ATR is the same color. And I cannot say that enough. Traders get confused on that. My indicator strategy must be green. That's why I put the indicator over top of strategy. It must be green. So I won't turn the strategy on until this is green with green momentum. Momentum. All right. So then you can see it caught that first retracement there. And then the big one was a steep retracement. Right here is 1334. All six turned green. 
and look how the strategy caught the exact low into the zone and it exploded. I mean, it just exploded right there is the caught the deeper it caught the deeper retrace, but it's still above my zone. So the strategy will go long, and then you have this big explosion to the upside, and that was 94.12. That was over a 130 tick move uh, on the CL in the afternoon. But see, it was all based upon getting speed in the market. Now, what the update, which I'll show you what I'll have, is I will have this. I will have speed coming in the market. A vertical arrow, a vertical line will come down through. When you're looking for this first retracement, this one will come up. Then also I'm going to do for you guys, and I'll go this coming up because this will be in program now for you guys also. It's going to show the wave counts. Wave one. Wave two. Wave three. And so on. So it'll show you the wave counts as we move up. It will start the count over after you get speed. I'm sorry, I had speed there too, so this would be wave one again. So the first, the first two waves are your best waves after speed. The, that's your first, these are your best waves. Wave one, wave one, right here. Wave one would be over here too. This would be wave two, right? So you can use, you can use our momentum chart to use a strategy to find out when you got possible you know, reversals and, and so on like that. Now, the same thing happens to the downside. So let's say in the morning we had a lot of sell signals in this morning. So the same thing, it, it's, going to, it's going to show you when you got sell signals, uh, speed came actually in here and you can turn it on. The first two waves are the best waves. Now, traders always say, well, what's the best wave to get on this strategy then? What's the best wave to get? The best wave is the zone trades. The zone trades are the best. So you can filter these trades out and only take zone. So let's say you just want to take zones. And say, I don't want to take zones. I don't want to take all waves. You can actually just take the zone. Now what it's going to do, it's only going to take zone trades. That's it. So now it's going to filter all your trades for you and only take zone trades. So every trade it takes, it's got to get into the zone. It's not going to take any trades away from the zone. So if you don't have a zone trade, it's not going to fill you. So it's got to get inside the zone. So here, it only took that big 100 tick move, 130 tick move, because you're inside the zone. All right, so we'll go over different. Now, this is just one time frame. Like I said, you know, this is a Uni Rinko, 118 over 18. You know, traders, let's say traders ask me all the time, well, can I change it to a smaller stop and do a 113.13? Will it still fire the same? Yeah, it's, it's not, it's going to fire the same because it's the, it's, it's the, you're, you're buying the zone. If you use smaller time frames, I wouldn't be buying outside the zone, so I would stay away from these. So on the zone indicator, I would check zone only. If you're using real small time frames, smaller time frames. And then you're only getting zone trades for smaller time frames. Right? And then shorts the same way. So if you come up to it, you're looking for zone trades here. You're only looking for zone. You're not looking for trades like this, even though this worked out. You know, that's the best way to do it. And we'll go over strategies on how to do that on the on as we as we go through these conference calls. But just remember the easiest thing to remember with this is that you want speed in the market. You really do. You, you, to me, if you're trading this algo, if you're leasing this algorithm, I'm educating everybody. You should not take any buys or sells or even look at them if you, have, if you, if you don't have an opposite color speed bar. If you don't have an opposite color speed bar, you shouldn't even look at a setup against ATR trend because that these two will set the whole trade up. It's that simple because you're catching the wrongly positioned traders on, on, the, on the reversal, right? We're buying high and selling higher and so on, all right? And so I'm going to show you as we progress next week, I'm going to get a little bit more in depth, but I'll show you here a little bit right now before because I wanted these to be about 45 minutes each and we're at 515, but you don't have to have a zone. You can have 
so with prude, if you just want 62 over 62, you could do that, or 54 over 54. I love 54, by the way. Love it on larger time frames. So let's say you just want this. You don't have to have the zone per se. You have to have a line in the sand. So anything that shows a anything above 54, above or below, I'm looking to go in that direction. And it's pretty universal in all markets I've found. So 154, 154. So anything that is above, that sustains above 54, what I find in the longer time frames, you'll find this a lot in the NASDAQ futures, it'll come right down to this 54. It won't close below it. You know, big runs, big runs, down to 54, big runs, big runs, down to 54, big runs on the larger time frames. So I'm going to show you on the larger time frames, how you can just even have a number, and it's not to be 54. I mean, if you want to go to the the outer limit of 62, I mean, you know, because a lot of traders love the 62 retracement. You know, you can put both 62, and it's telling you that's a line in the sand in the market. It keeps you on the right side of the market, and then you look for WPs in that direction. You know, with overall with overall momentum. Let me put this up here. Hold on a sec. If I do that, then it's telling me the strategy will not take anything outside of 62 retracement. Or if you only want to take shallow retracements, you can tell it to only take anything below your shallow also that I give you guys. So now it's telling you there that it, you can take trades like this and you want to get as close as you can. What I'm finding is on the longer time frames, I want to actually go through it a little bit on the large time frames, but not close outside of it, and it shoots straight back up. NASDAQ does this a lot. It goes through a little bit, shoots straight back up. It goes through it by here, doesn't close below it. Because what happens on longer time frames, which I'll show you in these up upcoming conference calls, you know when to not take the trade. So what will happen, this is pretty cool, is you'll start coming down for retracement on a larger time frame, right? And this will still be green, still green, still green. If it goes too deep, what happens is you get a red dot that prints right here. And that tells you what? Possible trend change to the downside. Don't take this retracement. If it, this does not come up and you get a reversal bar, you pop in that trade and it usually fires straight back up. And we'll go over that strategy. You guys will love seeing this. It's pretty neat. Especially if you love the NASDAQ futures. These longer time frames, they love to come down to 54 get just a little bit below it, it doesn't close two candles, and boom, bounce up, boom, bounce up. So I'll show you that, you know, coming up. In fact, let me see if I can do it before we, uh, da, 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 hold on one sec. Let me get these trades off here before we go. One second. Okay, let me see, let me see. Let me get these trades off. There we go. Okay, so once you start trading longer time frames, this happens a lot. I'll show you how to do it. I caught this one to close today. You get these. It'll come right to it. You get the reversal. If you're doing this, you should probably do minis because your stock's going to be larger, trading larger time frames. If you let them breathe, the moves are dramatic. And it's, it's, it's pretty much all through the day like this. Here's another continuation. It's above it. Larger time frame. You get these significant big moves. Another one. Here's three in a row. Three big ones. Here's another one. Just trend rolled over huge moves man I'll show you how to do this and I'll show you uh, with the minis and stuff here's another one trend change big move it's very very accurate like I said you should try to do the micros up first here's another one right to my 54 level I love the 54 in the NASDAQ I love on these larger time frames I mean it likes to come up to it there it is another big one I mean, it's just it's clockwork another one another one it just can't no, no here now watch but see, you don't take them if it, this happens right here. So 
If you have a green, 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 and the red dot pops up, what does that mean? Can't take it. Continuation to the upside. You forget about it. Find another one for you. Here's a great one right here. It happened 11 o'clock this morning. Came right down to my 54. I love the 54 number. I keep preaching it to you guys. 54, larger time frame, just explodes to the upside. Here again, see, no red dots printed above. You can take these swings. And I'm going to go over a whole conference call on these larger time frames. Another short, another short, another short there. Here we go, another short there. But you get the dot right here. You can't take it because momentum is what? Changing. Now, what you, I haven't done this, which I know some of you will try. Once you get the opposite color dot, you can theoretically, I haven't tried this yet, but you can take it to a blow-off rally because that's what's typically happening. Once you get a trend change, it typically explodes the other direction. Um, here again, right to it. Here again. What, did red dot appear? No. Continuation. You see, see my point? I, I will do a whole conference call on this because it's so accurate with, this, with my ATR and my uh, zones. Right here again, I love my 54. Big, huge short this morning. You can see I got a lot of setups, man. A lot of setups. Now, let's say here, you're like, well, this one would have stopped you out. Yes, it would have. So how can you avoid situations like this? Take the first wave. First wave. There's wave one. There's wave one. There's wave two. You're playing wave three up here, right? Very dangerous on wave three. Right? And wave three gets stopped out. But look at the first two waves. Right? Here again. Wave one. This is at 9.54 this morning. Get my point. Here's wave one again. Big time frame. Explosion. So you can trade off the larger time frames like this too, guys. You don't have to trade the five sim and so on. If, I mean, if you got patience enough to wait for these, I will show you how to do that because it's one of my favorite setups now on the NASDAQ futures that I use. And um, I haven't really used it in other markets, but it works universal in all markets. I will go over that with you in uh, entirely on half a conference call by itself, how to utilize larger time frames. And what I would do, I would just, you know, use the micros against it because the moves are so pronounced. But you can take on more risk with the micros and bigger stops. If you trade off larger time frames like that with this system, use the micros because then you don't sweat it. Right? And you don't have to do as many contracts. But it's a neat little way how to get these rhythms. Because when you trade smaller time frames like this, you get this you get the same waves, right? You just get more of them. You get tons of more waves. So if you're a trader that says, hey, I, I want less waves, but I want a pronounced moves, then I'll, I'll show you how to do that. I have another way how to do it with this. Let's say you have a blow-off rally here, right? Another good strategy. What I'll do is you have another big blow-off rally, and you get this, right? You get this right here, and then you get this guy. The second wave, I will look for specific stochastic down here. The longer we'll have to flatline near 20%, I mean near 80%, meaning it's got a flat line like it's really running hard. So a flat line up top. And then the shorter term, which I'll show you how to do, another strategy I'll show you how to do in the conference call, it will V bottom. And if you see this setup, and you've got to have two moving averages set up too. you got to have a 20 and a 50 set up. So what you would do is, in this scenario, I'll show you how to do this. And then I'll, we'll go over it in detail on upcoming conference call. But I love this setup. Let me see. Let's put a, uh, uh, where are we at here? So what you can do is, with the ATR and the speed bar, after you get going, Let me put a 20, then I'll put a 50. Magenta, I'll get red, that's fine. All right, so if I see here did not, so this one right here, if you have your 20 that maintains above the 50 and this gives a speed bar, a speed bar and you see this, where it V bottoms, but this stays flat line up top. You got serious momentum. You take the first bar right there, first reversal bar. And it is seriously momentum. So I'll show you how to do that with the ATRs and also the momentum also. 
So there's a lot to this, man. I'm telling you, it's neat. It's pretty neat. The more the more that I trade with this system, the more I love it because I'm now looking at strictly momentum. I very rarely buy deep retracements anymore now that I'm using these momentum indicators and how to use them. So the next three conference calls, we'll break this down a little bit more for you, and um, I'll show you some techniques that you guys are going to love. And some of you will love the longer time frame trading the micro because it's, it's more relaxed trading. Um, the stops are larger, but since you trade micros and you do less contracts, you do less contracts, it, it's pretty neat because especially if you trade the NASDAQ futures, um, it's, you get a lot of setups. And you can trade the S&P, the Russell 2000 micros, or whatever you want to do. Okay? So that's uh, series one here, guys. Um, I just want to go over the basics tonight. I'm going to go into some serious strategies. Like I just went over these last two strategies that I absolutely love um, on longer time frames on this. I will show you how to do that in our upcoming conference calls. I want to get, get out the basics out of the way today for you guys and gals. And uh, it'll be fun going over this stuff and uh, so to take you guys to another level uh, on this system. And like I said, you will be getting an updated version when I get it finished. We'll, we'll, it'll do the wave counts for you. And it will strictly show you a vertical bar <clears throat> when momentum comes in. And the strategy will turn on automatically only for momentum trades. So your strategy now, if, if you don't turn it off, it'll still take chop trades, right? Well, I'm getting it so it'll only take vertical trades only. For, for high probability trades. So if we do get stopped out on it, you get stopped out with high momentum. And that's very, very, very uh, neat because you're putting yourself in the highest possible chance of success because you're strictly trading vertical markets. All right. All right, you guys have a good evening. I'll be in here tomorrow at 8.15. Hopefully uh, you picked up a few things. I know these conference calls are, are pretty quick, but we're going to keep going over them. Next, uh, next week, we'll go over it again. We'll, we'll go over it again. And... Uh, We'll keep going over this stuff, but I'm just not going to show you how the indicator works. I'm going to show you strategies that that I use and that, that you can use and you can use in different markets. Listen, there's so many markets out there. We're all not going to trade the same markets, so we don't have to worry about order flow. We're all going to trade different markets, okay? All right, sounds good. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. You guys have a great one, and uh, thanks for attending.